let's talk about you know because it's all very well talking about the cause of these issues and where they come from but you know as the saying goes the only way out is in Jung said the psychological rule is that which we hold within ourselves we meet in life as fate back to what I was telling you about Groff there what we hold within ourselves the complex or the coex that is creating sensation emotion feeling that generates behavior that then interacts with the world that reacts back to us and what an amazing thing to realize that you are fully and totally responsible for everything that happens in your life when you take responsibility for it then you say well there's something i can do about it and there's something you can do about it is you know what gross said consciousness does not just passively reflect the objective material world it plays an active role in creating reality itself all the great shamans and gurus and and, and teachers would say that what is at play here is consciousness did you and i and all of us are sparks of divinity or sparks of consciousness incarnated into a human physical form playing out a role here living out a particular life as as shakespeare said all the world's a stage and we are actors on it and you, you, when you get to that place of detached awareness it's fascinating when you can stand back outside of yourself as the observer and watch yourself playing out these roles and how who you invite in to play other roles in you and you see the play or as the hindus call it lila the play of consciousness and when you see it from that transpersonal perspective you know i find anyway for myself i stop taking myself so seriously anymore because it's all a cosmic game it's a cosmic game that's playing itself out and when you can have that touch to awareness but you're not caught up in what other people think about you or this going right or that going right everything is a lesson everything that happens is a manifestation of your own unconscious and when you see it from that point of view you say what if i went inside myself i made what's unconscious in me conscious i can do that i have i have the ability to do that and therefore i can change my fate as you would say we meet in life as fate i can change my fate by ch- it's like going behind the projector screen where we see the movie of our life being played out and you go into the projector then you go into the film and then you go back to the script and you rewrite the script that then projects that, that goes on to the film that then projects onto the screen of your life you change it on the inside and everything starts changing on the outside that's a fundamental part of what i'm talking about here today that none of us are you know helpless in this world that we live that we have the opportunity and the ability to do something about it now it is the road less traveled don't get me wrong it's not an easy road to take and I'll talk more about this in the journey I had of the dark screen um that's why they call it the road that road less traveled because it's very easy to stay asleep and lie on the couch and watch television um you know stay stuck on facebook and social media Uh, you know drink a lots of alcohol or whatever that's the easy thing to do and that's what most people tend to do but then you get to a point where that's no longer working for you it's no longer serving you and what you want to do is change because you're forced to change often so on times the crisis in your life is the best thing that ever happened to you because that awakens you that says there has to be more to life than this and that often is how that journey of transformation um, begins when 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 the crisis happens when something the relationship breaks up um we lose our job we get into financial difficulties and we we ask what's it all about what's what's my life about and then we turn and we start moving moving inwards and there are many ways of doing this working working I'll talk more about it in the non-ordinary states of consciousness but one thing I do want to say Paul Levy wrote a great book called The, the Spelling Wet Tico. Wet Tico is a Native American term and it it basically is describing a mind virus or a psychic virus that has infected us all. We talk about the covid virus. This mind virus is far more dangerous in terms of what Levy is talking about. He says it has gotten into our psyche and it has corrupted our very essence and very being. So what how does it manifest itself? It manifests itself in greediness, in avarice, in 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 aggression, 
in, in, in creating wars, in capitalism, in the sense of, of, of taking from the earth everything that she can not afford to give us because we are so hungry within ourselves and we feel so empty within ourselves that we want to consume the world to fill that up. And that will lead to our destruction. That will lead to the end of the human species if we don't find a remedy or a vaccine for the Wikiko. Now, the shamans and, and, and teachers and healers have said that the remedy for Wikiko is to raise your vibrational frequency to a level above the frequency of the Wetiko, of the mind virus. And how do you do that? You go out in nature and you walk the mountains. You sit by the trees by the lake and you let the wind blow in your hair. You take a shamanic journey where the drumming brings you into the imaginal realms where you meet your spirit guides and, 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 and in the upper world, you meet your ancestors. Where you have a direct experience of the divine oneness of creation. You dispel Wetiko by um, being loving, be kind, having compassion and kindness for yourself, first of all, but also for others too. You love animals. You feel, you feel sad when you see nature being destroyed and you, you take action, you do something about it. All, you do yoga, meditation, mindfulness. All these, you, you give up the things that Wetiko loves. Wetiko loves bad food, sugars. It loves alcohol. It loves drugs that bring your energy down. It loves anger and aggression. It loves not taking responsibility for yourself. So you, you begin to move away from those. You begin to move more towards things that keep you more in harmony with the world and with your true nature, which is none other than a divine being. So one of the ways we like to work is we work with non ordinary states of consciousness. Now, that would be, for example, um, meditation, isolation in nature, um, drumming, trance dancing, wonderful way to raise your energy, the holotropic breath work. Some people work with sacred plants and medicine. Other people get into therapy and they start working on, on, on their issues. Um, and non ordinary states of consciousness has been part of our indigenous ancestors going back tens of thousands of years. It was part of the culture and the tradition to sit in the morning and share your dreams with the, with the tribe, for example. It was a, a part of the ritual and ceremony of um, marking the solstices, for example, where people came together and give thanks for the earth and went to the sacred sites close to here, like Tara, La Cruz, um, Newgrange, Clacta, and, and they came together to, to celebrate the, the changes in the seasons. But they did it as community. And this is what we're, we're, we're missing a lot nowadays, is a sense of community. We're, we're, we're disconnected from ourselves, from each other, and, and, and from community, but also to the spirit world, the spirit community, our, 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 our teachers, spirit guides in the other world, power animals who are there to help us and assist us. Because here's the thing, when you take that step on the road less traveled, the universe rushes towards you and says, come on, take another step. And it provides you with the, the people and the things and everything in your life you need. Try it. You'll see it's true. And I'd say you already know this because you've, you've, you've done it many times. Look how your life has changed in times where things seemed really difficult and something happened. There was, there, was, there was a moment where grace filled the space of your life. Those moments are there all of the time for all of us. If we stop the busy monkey mind and take time out to be just present to ourselves. For me personally, nature does it, animals do it. That space. So the womb is your healer. That's a strange idea. Um, I remember many years ago, I, I was at a conference in London and I was a, I was a trainee counselor at the time and I was kind of in despair. There was so much pain and misery and suffering in the world. And what could I do about it? What could anybody do about it? And out of nowhere, and this is one of those moments of grace that I'm talking about, the voice said, this voice in my head said, suffering is the growing pains of the soul. Wow. Blew me away. I was, because I got it right away. Suffering is the growing pains of the soul. Right. Okay. So my suffering is bringing me into awareness. It's making me 
question my life. It's bringing me into a deeper state of consciousness and it's showing me that there's more to my life than what Freud said about his patients that all he could do was return them to the ordinary misery of everyday life. Well, there's much more than that. So this sense of the wound as healer, suffering being the growing pains of the soul, it's about integrating the shadow. The shadow is all those parts of self that we've repressed and put away because it's painful and we suffer and it's hurtful and, 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 and we don't want to know about it. Jung said, actually, that the shadow was 90% gold. What he meant by that was that much of our potential lies in the shadow realms. Much of our greatness and our light and energy lies there, but we have it all stuck away because what's blocking the way to it is our pain, our hurt, our suffering. But when you embrace that and you work with it, you go through it, it opens up. You know, my sense is that in order to get to heaven, you have to go to, through hell first. It's like, I've had that on, on, on quite a few journeys, you descend into the hellish places, you do your work there, your shadow work, and then you're liberated into the upper realms and the upper world and into the heavenly realms. So there's no shortcut, there's no easy way. And, and that's what we're doing in, in a lot of cases in our world. We're trying to take the shortcuts of alcohol and drugs and sex and rock and roll it gives us a temporary sense of uh, satisfaction, it, it, but it doesn't give us true joy. And people are seeking happiness as this happiness is the thing we have to be happy, happy, happy. No, in my experience, happiness is a byproduct of our individuation process. It, it comes when we do the other things. And it often comes in as an act of grace when we least expect it. So that's the inner world. Working with dreams is very important and significant. Freud said dreams were the royal road to the unconscious um, because what dreams are doing is they're showing us what we're not conscious of and they're also trying to balance out our um, everyday life. So what we're not conscious of in our everyday world, the dream will bring it up in the night time to get us to look at it. And if you just journal your dreams, write them down, um, pay some attention and you don't have to be a great dream interpreter to work with your dreams. One of the way I teach my students to work with dreams is take a shamanic journey into the dream as if it was happening now and dialogue with all the characters in the dream because those characters in that dream are aspects of yourself trying to speak to you. So you dream of somebody in your, in, in your dreams. You're not dreaming really about them. You're dreaming about an aspect of yourself that's looking to be heard. And Jung came up with this idea of active imagination where he would, you know, interact with and dialogue with all those characters. Same thing with the shamanic journey. So dream work is another powerful way of doing inner work.